Hey guys, it's the Mad Master here, doing a video, and hopefully I'll get through this video without being uh, interrupted, but um, there is a band playing in the background because of my roommate's band is playing in the basement, um, so pardon the intrusion if there is one. Anyways, this video is about rock music and why it is dying in many people's opinions, and I brains and this is totally unscripted or whatever you know basically I've been contemplating this for a few months so hopefully it'll turn out the best it can and I see uh, this is kind of a three-part series so it's gonna be part one part two and part three the first part is related to one of the most important issues of my rock music is dying or uh, metal is related to rock because it is rock um, so this is my opinion a lot of rock and rock and rock and roll music was based on R&B and the blues and black music and it's gotten so far from that that you have I was in a comment forum or comment section of uh, Wasp's Wild Child yesterday looking at some of the comments about oh this is when good Caucasians made music and I was like facepalm because rock and roll and rock is not white I mean there is a white element the country in rockabilly you know did come from white people but it's a mixture of black music and white music probably even was more black, so to speak, in the early 60s, and that's where the rock of today comes from more than you know, rock and roll in the 50s in a lot of ways. So it really was a, it was just really a dumbfounded me why people would be so ignorant about where rock music came from and where it, it what it is. So I think that's one element is that it's gotten away so much from its roots and from its origins and you know it's not that there can't be progressive rock there can't be metal there can't be uh neoclassical metal that has no blues scales in it i'm not saying something like that basically what i'm saying is that when there's none of that stuff when it's so far from that all of it as a collective uh, uh collective thing then a lot of the original appeal is lost so you have a lot of white kids that are listening to black music, even if admittedly a lot of the new rap and R&B is really shitty. It still fills a need. The rhythm is still there, that basic primal rhythm. You can't hear that with, uh, uh, you know, mutilated corpse vomit or something it's with blast beats. You know, people who... The normal teenage mind is not going to relate to that. It's going to be a niche thing, a fringe thing, anything like that, always. Even though I like, I probably, you know, almost in some ways prefer really complicated metal stuff sometimes. Um, that's not going to appeal as many people, to as many people. And along with that rhythm, as uh, this might sound a little strange, but that rhythm is also sexuality. And as politically incorrect as it sounds, the pussified indie rock white boy rock thing now is very far from Mick Jagger, for example, of 1963. It's not... It, it is it's lost its primal sexual uh, Dionysian uh, feeling that was to totally in rock for thirty or forty years. A lot of at least mainstream rock, and then you have this fake version of that, which is the bro shit, you know, like Nickelback or whatever. It's like oh, it's just. The, these elements in rock, you know, that are not there, and they're made fun of when they're, you know. So it's not only it's not only the feeling; it's, it's also the lyrics. So, rap and R and B, they can get away with all these sexual 
borderline, sometimes misogynist lyrics. But if you do that in rock or metal, you're seen as like antiquated and cheesy or uh, ironic. Or, you know, like for example, Steel Panther, you know, it's a joke. Spinal Tap, it's a joke, you know, that kind of stuff. So when you do those types of lyrics, you're criticized if you're serious about it. Unless you're a rapper or R&B star, you know, having songs about butts or whatever, you know. So it's not a... And the fact that there's been this segregation between these two ideas of music is really responsible in some ways for the death of rock. Because young people are going to seek out that sexual outlet whether it be lyrically or musically a lot of the time. And when hair metal died, that was the beginning of the end. It doesn't mean that political lyrics aren't good or, you know, lyrics about scientists or whatever the fuck, you know, technical death metal stuff is bad. I'm not saying that. But when that's all there is for rock is the brain rather than the rhythm, you know, the intellectual thing or indie rock or whatever, then you're going to lose a lot of people that want to have that rhythm and those ideas. So it's pushed out into this other realm. So I don't know if that made sense. I'm going to do two more videos about this. And you know, I've been basically thinking about this for a long time. Uh, please comment and tell me if I'm wrong or full of shit. But definitely to subscribe and click on the ads too. Thank you.